According to recent reports and publications, around 80% of lithium-ion batteries are currently used for small electronics and around 20% for large electronic devices. And with a large-scale adoption of electrical vehicles, the number of lithium-ion batteries in service is expected to increase. Therefore, in 5-10 years, the global amount of lithium-ion battery waste will increase significantly. If we take a look on the some predicted and reported numbers, it says that in 2020, around 98,000 tons of lithium-ion battery waste were generated globally. The rough estim estimation, therefore, showed that by 2030, the global lithium-ion battery waste will increase to more than 6 million tons. And these numbers can be visualized by area of these circles. The number by 2040 becomes even more scary, where the global waste amount can reach up to 120 million tons. If we take into consideration that currently there is no preferred concept for processing and recycling lithium-ion battery scrap, the problem of their recycling becomes more significant. Let's analyze the cost, for example, first for all battery constituents and their price for their preparation. We can see that more than 50% go to the price of the cathode materials, including such valuable components like lithium, nickel, cobalt, or manganese. Around 24% of the cost is used for battery manufacturing, which requires special conditions, and the rest, a small fraction of the money goes to for preparation and cost of materials of anodes, separator, electrodes, or housing. Therefore, it is not surprising that the most currently available recycling technologies are targeting the recovery of cathode materials. Currently, there are three major uh, ways of lithium ion batteries recycling. These are direct recycling, pyrometallurgy, and hydrometallurgy. Um, as all technologies are starting from collecting batteries, they are sorting, dismantling, discharging, and crushing. In the next step, for example, in direct recycling, the electrodes are separated uh, when steel, plastic, and electrolytes are removed. And then in the next step, aluminum and copper foils are separated when end-of-life electrode materials uh, are obtained. And after their regeneration, the electrode materials can be further uh, reused in batteries. In the hydrometallurgical method, after physical separation and obtaining so-called black mass, materials are going through multi-step hydrometallurgical processing like leaching and precipitation processes. As a result, lithium and transition metals uh, such as uh, nickel, cobalt and manganese are recovered recovered and in a state of battery grade salts. And then they can be used for reproduction of the cathode materials. After the pretreatment uh, in the, uh, at the pyrometallurgical methods, all battery constituent constituents are smelted and uh, at really high temperatures uh, at more than 1000 degrees C. As a result, transition metal alloys obtained while Lithium, aluminum, graphite are lost in a so-called slug or gas evaporations. And uh, transition metals, which are uh, discovered, uh, recovered as the alloys, further go through hydrometallurgical methods, uh, through multi-step leaching and precipitation, where their salts of battery grade salts are created and used for remading. Uh, remaking uh, cathode materials. Each of currently developed recycled technologies that have their pros and cons, of course. It is shown in a certain charts the advantage of direct recycling. It is complete recovery of all valuable components 
uh, lithium and transition metals. However, the complexity of this method, its cost, its energy usage, uh, make it far from optimal for a wide industrial usage. The highest advantage of hydrometallurgy is the level of recovery of transition metals. However, the cost of this method, the waste generation, remain the main challenges of its industrialization, utilization as a profitable and reliable method. The most simple and technologically developed technology these days is pyrometallurgy, which allows a recovery of the majority of cobalt and nickel. However, the capital cost, waste generation, complete loss of lithium and energy level used for this method requires significant improvement. In order to address main negative points of the current recycling technologies like waste generation, lithium loss, complexity, profitability, we developed a recycling method using the so-called mechanochemical approach. This, the preliminary or investigation of this method was done when I was employed in the United States in Apes National Lab. And here at Kaite, we significantly improved this method, extended it to different battery chemistries and to real industrial battery wastes. As I told before, the crushing step of or so-called ball milling is introduced in almost all recycling technologies. And our approach, in this approach, we introduced or incorporate a chemical interaction or so-called reduction reaction into this pretreatment step. Therefore, there is no need to introduce new step, new extra step in the current technology stream. It is known that during mechanochemical treatment or ball milling, material goes through proper intermixing, particle size reduction, plastic deformation, and most importantly, to chemical reactions. And this is a core of our approach. Uh, the size of ball milling machines can vary from laboratory scale to industrial scale. Therefore, we believe that this method can be in, in used in, real, in reality and applied in industry. Um, if to explain briefly our method, it can be uh, shown like that. So as active ma cathode materials with a general formula of L lithium metal oxide, when it's ball milled with a reducing agent like aluminum or calcium, during the ball milling reduction reaction occurs where lithium metal oxide is reduced to lithium oxide, aluminum oxide, and with formation of metallic composite. If we take a look on the all product of this mechanochemical reaction, we can see that only lithium oxide is a component which is water-soluble. The rest component like metals, cobalt, nickel, manganese, or aluminum oxide are not water soluble, therefore can be separated from lithium oxide by simple water leaching and filtration. Obtain lithium oxide transform it with water lithium hydroxide, which of course can be then transformed to lithium carbonate salt by uh, water evaporation and reaction with CO2 from the air. Of course, lithium carbonate can be formed by reaction with sodium carbonate. However, this process requires special temperature control and a little bit more complex than our proposed process. While tuning our technology, we developed two processes. Two process. Process one, uh, after, in the process one, after the reactive milling, the reduced products are leached with water in the aqueous leaching step. As a result, we obtain lithium carbonate with some level of impurities. Therefore, additional purification step was introduced where we obtain high purity lithium carbonate. In order to reduce number of steps, we also develop a second process 
where after reactive leaching, we introduce so-called carbonatization step. At this step, after this step, uh, after washing and leaching, uh, leaching with water and filtration, we obtain again high purity lithium carbonate uh, salt. If we analyze the lithium yield of developed processes, we clearly can see that we have a significant increase in the amount of recycling lithium in a process too. What exciting and important that these processes are effective for all currently used cathode chemistries such as LCO, NMC, LMO, LFP, and what is interesting, even their mixture. As a result, we can obtain high purity lithium salt, lithium carbonate. And uh, we, of course, when we take a look on the processes, we can see when we switch in from, from process one to process two, we see potential reduction in the total cost of the process due to decrease the number of steps and significant increase in recycling proficiency. We can see that in a more simple process, we obtain lithium up to 70% yield. So it is, it is clear that its simplicity could be one of the biggest advantage of this process as we can use aluminum as a reducing agent, which already one of the component of aluminum, uh, lithium, uh, lithium ion batteries. And uh, therefore we are not introducing a new component into the battery uh, reduction process. The universality of this process is another advantage as it is was shown that we can use this process even for the mixture of different uh, chemistries of cathode material, therefore no pre-sorting step will, can be required. Of course, the low temperature of the process um, and uh, high yield with a high purity of lithium carbonate, it's also one of the good advantages of our method. So the proposed technology is green as no corrosive additives like uh, acids is used in this process, no gas emission ex is expected, and water which is used for leaching can be recirculated. And uh, of course, uh, we believe that this process is potentially scalable, which is also one of the advantage of this technology. The next step for us is very clear. As proved that our method is working on a laboratory scale, it's logical to shoot higher and go and check whether this method will work in a real industrial waste and a, in a pilot or even industrial scale. Currently, we have funded two European projects which are started last year uh, together with industrial partners. And there we will work on the implementation of our technology of the, on the higher level. One of the projects so-called Lycorn, uh, which started October last year uh, and will last for four years. In this project, we will work on cathode production scrap. In another project, so-called Rhinoceros, we also work with industrial partners, but there we will use our technology for the so-called black mass obtained by other industrial partners. And another part of our ongoing investigation can be shown in the cartoonish slide where it was shown it is shown that this process is pretty simple and can be performed almost in the kitchen. So it was shown that uh, battery after ball milling goes through the uh, water uh, filtration, and filtrate can be evaporated to obtain lithium carbonate. But what happened to the part which remains in the colander? And that's the target of our next publication and which is in the preparation stage. Therefore, keep eye on our future publications and presentations.